time, leisure time. Did you ever stop to think how much leisure time you really have? What is the meaning of life, Karis Euphrenor, as you ask right after you know that I'm a philosophy major? Allow me to explain to you briefly, and you may be familiar with this, but it's a good refresher nonetheless. A paradigm shift. A paradigm shift is when everything that you thought you knew or everything or the, the premises, the foundational pieces of knowledge and information that, that make up your understanding of the world are shaken. They are shook. Um, when that happens, it's when the, the, the bottom of the Jenga tower moves. It's when it all like it shakes and and sometimes some th some of the things on top of the Jenga tower will fall down, you know, and it'll be destroyed and that that's not very good. It's very scary. I understand. I understand it's very scary, but a paradigm shift is usually necessary when we realize that what's at the bottom of this Jenga tower doesn't work anymore. You know, it, it doesn't it's insufficient to uh, for our understanding of the world and as such it requires a paradigm shift our conception of everything. Now, a good way to explain this, or a good way to see what I mean, perhaps to visualize in your head beyond the Jenga tower um, metaphor, will be the Copernican turn. Um, Copernicus was a scientist in the 1500s and is, or at least he published a, a revelatory thing in the 1500s that began the Copernican turn, as we call it, and it is essentially the proposition that rather than earth being at the center of the world and the universe and with the sun and the other things spinning around us it was actually that we spin around the sun on earth as just one of the planets now obviously if you exist in this timeline in this time zone um right at this time period where vtubers exist you probably know that that's not the case. Of course, you're like, oh, of course. You know, Earth and the other planets revolve around the sun. Of course, we learned that, you know, very early on. But you can imagine that wasn't always the case. That was not always um, what we were privy to. We didn't always collectively have this understanding that we were not at the center of the world, you know? And so for people who did think that and revolve their whole lives around that, you know, the sun is very important in our lives and it comes up in one direction and sets in another, you know? Like, what what does that mean? Does that mean, um, you know, perhaps the farmer may think, well, what, what does this mean for my crops and my, you know, whatnot? Why would I want to accept this radical departure from what I know when it wouldn't help me at all, you know? It, right now, what works, works. I don't need this new thing. I don't need to be challenged. I don't, I don't need this. More importantly, my crops and my yield and my livelihood doesn't need this. No, no, no. And that's completely understandable. Again, totally fair. But as we now see, perhaps in hindsight, that the paradigm shift was necessary, largely because it was necessary for the development of physics to have come afterwards. Mm -hmm. A revolutionary, someone, someone pointed out, a revolutionary change in what our current knowledge system, knowledge system is based on. That is what I remember. Very good. That's ex pretty much exactly what it is. Exactly right. Well, mostly, yeah, pretty much that. Um, just wanted to get the refresher on everyone. And, but more importantly, it's not the ideological thing that I think is important in this, because obviously we, we have an intellectual understanding of what a paradigm shift is, and we know that Copernicus was right, and we know that phys modern physics rests on this thing that is an important event in history, and, you know, we are smarter now than what once was. But I want you for a second to imagine that you didn't know. To imagine that you were in the 1500s, before Copernicus, or right as Copernicus published his work, and that everyone around you accepted that, well, of course everything revolves around the world, around, around Earth. That makes perfect sense. Like, and everything we've built and everything we understand is based on and fits perfectly into this premise. Why would we want to challenge or shake it? That's scary. That is not good for our livelihoods. I want you for a moment to picture yourself in that position. That's, this is really difficult, I understand, even as the charismatic and intelligent and very all-wise and sagely capable last librarian philosopher VTuber Alexandrian Karis Euphrenor, I understand this is not a task that was easy for me 
nor will it be an easy task for you. But for the remainder of this, I want you to imagine that the paradigm we live in right now is not the correct one. You know, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm saying just just imagine for a moment that is isn't that maybe the earth was flat or maybe um, the sun revolved around the earth. Now, OK, that should be enough, right? That's enough prompting. You're in that headspace. Wonderful. We must proceed with this headspace in mind, not just intellectually, you know, and understanding it through reason, but emotionally. How would that feel if, you know, if your friend, if maybe if you were if you were friends with Copernicus, you know, and he just rolls up on it and he's like, dude, guess what? And you go, what? Everything you know is wrong. And you go, what? No. What are you talking about? And everything everyone else knows is wrong. What? What are you? What are you saying? And he's like, here, I've, I've got this, this right here. It, 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 it says, you know, I've worked out the, the math, and then it, it's, it's what it shows is actually that, you know, the, the sun doesn't revolve around us. We spin around the sun, and at this point, you, you're just lost. You're like, what the hell does that mean? That doesn't make any goddamn sense, Copernicus. Please, stop yapping, Copernicus. You know, we might be tempted to say, we might, we might. We may be, you know, just throwing that out there. We might be tempted to tell him to stop yapping. That's too much. I don't want to hear it. And indeed, that would be a sympathetic view. Everyone would say that. Everyone would think that. It would make, it would just, it would just be so inconvenient to accept what he's saying. Because what if it was true? You know, what if Copernicus, my man, what if you were spitting facts and logic and you were right? What if then? What do we do? What, I, 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 I'm confused and I'm lost and I'm, I'm frustrated and at the end of the day I have a family to feed, man. I have to go back. We say to Copernicus. Or I, I would. I would imagine myself if I was there, I would say something like that, you know? What do we do? Now, it's like, let's move on to the next stone chisel. You are dreaming. Now, if you are put into this headspace of what you know may not may or may not be true, you may be a little familiar with this concept from a certain uh, Descartes. <laughs> um, okay, imagine right now the possibility. You don't have to say that it's you know that it, you don't have to believe that's the case, but just imagine for a moment that you are dreaming. Imagine right now that you are not actually here in wasting your time in the Karis Euphenor <laughs> Q&A livestream. Imagine for a moment that you were dreaming and you know, you're just, you think you're watching a live stream from the famous VTuber Karis Euphenor, last librarian of Alexandria, first and last philosopher VTuber, you just, you know, you're not actually there, you're actually sleeping. Imagine for a moment that you are dreaming. None of this is real. Or it could, you could be dreaming. You don't know. The thing is, how would you know if you were dreaming unless you woke up? Another way, perhaps, in contemporary modern media is to think of the film Inception. That might be a way to do that, too. That's good. What do you do? How do you, how can you know? And what's important here isn't to say, well, oh, uh, well, I'm probably not dreaming, you know? It's like, maybe that's possible, but whatever, right? But, but you know, I'll just go back to my, no. I want to bring attention to the fact that you don't know if you're dreaming. You don't know if what you're seeing around you, your chair, your table, your uh, computer screen, your headphones, whatever. You don't know if any of this is real because it could just be in a dream, right? Have you ever woken up from a dream and go, went, oh shit, oh I didn't, oh that was, thank god that was a dream. Well imagine you're just moments away from that moment, alright? I wanted you to, want to set you into this um, headspace. Imagine as if you were dreaming. Now. Here is the more, more important question. How would you know if you were? Now you, you probably you're you're thinking, well, I can, you know, some of the good, some of the good, uh, some of the easy ways to tell if you're dreaming, actually, by the way, is to think of when, when you're in a dream and if you can kind of kind of control it or like you know conceive of it kind of keep maybe try to keep this in mind like try to look at the time or uh, a number or like text or just like anything that's the like kind of intricate details most likely you can't very clearly conceive of these tiny details in a dream actually yeah look at a clock look at a watch something like that you most likely cannot conjure 
a very detailed an accurate image if you were dreaming and if you look at a clock now and it makes sense you know you look at the clock and you go that's a, one of the clocks of all time yeah that works then you're probably not dreaming. probably you know it's a good it's a good kind of sign you know you can generally kind of assume you're not um and you know what's interesting there's a little interesting tidbit with this is actually that your you can't type or unlock your phone yeah something like that too something like that could work um this is these tiny details are actually kind of part of what um, c contemporary AI image generation struggles with. It struggles to make thing tell uh, make things like a proper clock or like a time or words. That's like a big struggle or like very minor details. It, it it tends to screw it up. And I think that's like I don't think there's much work. There's a lot of work that's been done on this or in this in the public consensus uh, consciousness, but like this connection between dreams and AI image generation is so interesting. It's so interesting to me. Now that you are fully aware that there's the possibility of dreaming, I can assure you with some amount of comfort, and again, this is just the Cartesian perspective, right? This is just to ease you into the concepts. There's one thing you can know for sure. If there's, if there's anything you can know for sure, this is, this is it. It's that you exist. You are real. Even if, you know, you're dreaming and, you know, nothing is real and you, you don't know what the hell's going on. You're looking around and you're confused and puzzled and dazed. You are real. Why? Because. The fact that you can even think of the possibility that you could be dreaming you know that 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 some of this may not be real you know it, it could be it could very well be but you're, you're you're wrestling with the thought or you're wrestling with any thought you know you're you're just engaging in something well there has to be again this is cartesian's worldview the cartesian worldview there has to be something doing the thinking right even if you turned out to be like a, a brain in a jar for example <laughs> um something has to be doing that thinking right what the hell could that be? Well, it could be many things. But what you can know for sure is that that is you. That's you. You are thinking. And because you are thinking, you exist. You're real. Even if you, you know, you think everything around everything else in your in your vision and your world is fake. If you could be dreaming, you know at least you are real. Hence, Kogito ergo sum yes exactly right i think therefore i am that is the phrase and that is what that means now we can go further into this we can talk about um um brains and vats and you know what if a mad scientist took your brain out and then connected it in a tube and then like simulated a world that you were living in and you thought you were living and doing things but actually there's like a mad scientist pulling like plugs in your brain and stuff the, the thing you kind of get out of it, or at least one of the one of the first things you get out of it, and this is all we need for now for this discussion today, is you are real. You exist because you think. Because you can, you know, just conjure like any thought. It could be a stupid thought. You know, it could be like another attempt to ask me for my credit card information, right? Like it, you, it could be that. But nonetheless, you are still real and you are still thinking. That's awesome. So why did I put you in this headspace? Why did I try to get you to that? Because I wanted to, you know, kind of illustrate what it's like, the, the difficulty in it and how uncomfortable it can make you feel to truly be vulnerable for a moment and be open to the possibility that what you thought you knew, you don't actually entirely know. That is scary and it is uncomfortable and it's terrifying. And it's something we shy away from that I think we should try not to shy away from. I understand why we do, but I'm here to make the journey um, comfortable. Now let's return We've gone through our simulated worlds, our fake worlds, our um, brain in jars, our dreams. Let's return to the state of the world. You know, let's return to reality or whatever it is, whatever you want to call it. The state of the world kind of sucks. And we want to watch VTubers for comfort because, you know, I we don't want to. This is when this is like when you click off. This is when you're like, nah, this is getting way too uncomfortable and personal. Karis, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I got to get out. You know, I get it. I completely understand and agree with you, but here's the thing is I'm trying to help make it better. You know, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to make it a little easier to digest. You know, I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm not in your world, so I can't make any, you know, I can't change anything in your world, but I am trying to 
by inviting you into a glimpse into mine, see how you can tackle yours. Okay? So anyways, um, what you can't do about the situation, about the current state of all of it, perhaps is what's most scary, you know? It's not what you can influence and change within yourself or within um, people around you or the, your circumstances or whatnot, like, and even that is difficult. But what is even more so, what's even more difficult than that, what's even more, like, just <sighs> dreadful is what you can't do. This leads to... Um, as everyone is very familiar with, existential dread. Now, what I mean by existential dread isn't the existential dread that is, you know, the 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 ideology of it. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to speak to the philosophy of of existentialism. That can be for another stream. That's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, or the philosophy of anxiety or any of that. I'm just speaking to the um, the the regular non sage like wise you know, Karis like intelligence, uh, non that human experience, you know, that's what I'm speaking to is that there is a, an overwhelming sense of existential dread and it sucks because you just, you're just like, what the hell I'm put into all of this. I can't take this man. Like, why do I, why do I gotta do this? Like, why do I gotta get a job? Like, I thought, can I go back to being a kid and just not have to worry about everything. Can I just pretend like I don't know? Can I just be ignorant, please? So I may remain blissful. I hear you. I hear you. I understand. But know this. I am the bane of ignorance. I'm here to destroy it. That's the real op. This is where the real beef is. You shan't remain ignorant. Now I'll explain why. In the next, like, rock. But, but you know, for this rock, I'm just going to say, what do we do? I just want to, you know, maybe I just want to watch streams. Maybe I just want to watch VTubers, man. I don't want to think about all this. I don't want to do any of this. You know, I just want to be happy for a little bit before I have to go back to all this fucking bullshit. I hate it. You know, I, I get it. I understand. But it would be a great disservice to my name. As Karis Euphronor, the last librarian of Alexandria, the first and last philosopher VTuber, to not, at least for a little bit, be a philosopher about this. You know? I'm not just a VTuber, I am a philosopher VTuber. And I hope that's clear from this stream. Why? It's because I make you feel awful about life. <laughs> I promise, okay, I promise there's a point to it. I promise there's a point to it. Here's the point to it. Doomerism and cruel hope. Now. What is doomerism? It's a big word. It's got, it's got a, like, a few more syllables than I would be happy with. I understand. Me too. You know what? I don't like big words with too many syllables. So let me try to explain it. Doomerism is a sort of extension of the nihilistic state that we were in, that we've been building up from these stone, these chiseled stone pieces, right? That we've been building up. Doomerism. There is nothing to be done. We think. And we give up. We throw our hands in the air and say, you know, screw it. The whole world is, you know, it's going to shit. It's awful. It's on fire. It's burning down. It's bad. It, I hate it. You know, it's good. Ah! You know? If it's gonna suck anyways, why bother trying to waste my time thinking about it when I could be having fun, when I could be getting my bag, when I could be providing for the people around me, when I could be comfortable and happy, because isn't that what we want, is to be comfortable and happy? Yeah, maybe it is. But, well, as a philosopher, it's not what I want. <laughs> and maybe it won't be what you want either, once you've come out of this. Nonetheless, I hope. Um, but, doomerism is when you give up on the world and you say, screw it. I can't do anything about it. It's going to shit, and I don't want to deal with it. And there's nothing that could be done about it. You know? What am I going to do? It's that. It's that um, that state. It's it's less of an ideology, because, you know, I don't want to debate it like it's an, an ideology. Again, I'm not a debate bro. Like, that's not what I do. I'm not a filthy sophist, okay? I am a philosopher, and these are different things. Very important to distinguish. But the reason why 
I bring up doomerism is because doomerism is a self-fulfilling prophecy. A self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? That means when the more people think of doomers uh, that be, like have have a doomerist mindset, they are a doomer. Perhaps is the word. You think, oh, well, there's nothing I can do, whatever. I'm just going to give up and throw my hands up in the air and not engage with any of this because, you know, I'm just trying to do me, man. I'm just trying to do me. Well, you are fulfilling the very prophecy that there is nothing to be done because you're one person, because you are, in doing so, li lowering the impact that you, can, that you have on the world and, as such, the impact of those who seek change in the world. You are directly making it worse. Now, what's interesting about this poll or voting in general in polls and things like this, right? Now I'm going to raise this as the example. This is the example I'm raising. The more votes there are, the less impact a vote has, in the sense that the more people there are, the more forces at play, um, the more authority figures, the more agents of change, or the more like agents of not change, you know, status quo. So there's more, the more things there are, the more people there are, the less one person can do. You think of it that way. And right now, in your world, I believe, the last updated statistic is 8 billion. There's 8 billion of you. The more people there are, the less your vote matters. I want you to think about that for a second. Well, you've been thinking about that, but think about it a little bit more. However, and this is something you can observe maybe at the beginning of the poll. Or perhaps when there were less votes. when there's only a few votes in because less people are voting now because they think their vote doesn't matter the more your vote matters it shakes the whole poll you know it goes it goes really fast and it's and it, like it very variations happen isn't that interesting isn't that so interesting that this this very thing that's that's stopping us from acting, that we think, well, you know, what am I gonna do? I'm just one person. That, you know, that puts us in our rooms and in our, in ourselves and allows us to not engage with the world in meaningful ways is also the thing that makes it so that what you're doing matters more than ever. It matters more than ever that you're putting your vote in. This thing this thing that, that, that stops us, that makes us think, you know, screw that, I can't do anything, is the same thing that makes it so that what we do matters, actually. It, it does. And you know who benefits from you not knowing this? The people who like the way things are now. And here's the final note, the thing I want to touch on here, right? Um, on this doomerism idea is the cruelty of hope. The cruelty of hope. The cruelty of it is having to endure all those goddamn. Hope is starting a stream without technical issues. Someone said. <laughs> hope is hope is eventually is waiting for the one stream Karas Yuvanoish starts that he doesn't have to do twenty minutes of bug fixing before actually getting to the content. That's hope. Yep, that is hope. Hope is cruel. But we have finally arrived at the meaning of life. Faced with these uncertainties and perils and cruelties and and all of this, this is what we really, really want to know. We want to know, well, it sucks. What can I do? What do I do? You know, not just um, for big things, but even the small things, you know, what? What should I? I don't know. What game should I play today? What? What? Um, what stream? Which VTuber should I watch? Um, what major should I take in, in university? You know, like or in like college or whatever, like in, in school. You know, what job should I apply for? There's many of these questions, and and it's so difficult, and it's so uncertain, and it's so uncomfortable that when sometimes you just want to ask, what is the meaning of life, Karis Yufrenor, the great philosopher VTuber, tell me, because it's tiring, you know, and I don't want to think. Please do the thinking for me. Well, I'm here to tell you that I cannot do the thinking for you. You have to do the thinking for yourself. Yeah, and it, it sucks. I know it's hard and it's difficult. But the meaning of life is not 
And you probably knew this. It's not a one size fits all answer. You know, it's a, it's a, you can't just say, you know, the witty, maybe the pop culture reference is 42 or maybe, which, you know, again, points to the absurdity of it all, but I don't think people really got that, but, 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 you know, maybe think, oh, the meaning of life is playing Genshin Impact. Haha, <laughs> that's very funny, right? And it's a good joke. But nonetheless, the question still lingers and it haunts us. And we just don't want to think about it. And eventually, we come across a philosopher and we go, yes, finally, tell me what the meaning of life is. I can't tell you the meaning of life or what it is. Because, here's why. The question, and this is a very classic philosopher movie. <laughs> the question is wrong. The question should not be... What is the meaning of life? Because when you ask what pertaining to meaning in life, you are asking what the nature of it is, what it is. And, and frankly speaking, that is different for every person. I live a different life from you. You live a different life from all the chat bots in my, in my live stream chat that fuel my engagement. All right. We live different lives. Why would the nature of it, why would the what of it be the same? It makes no sense. It, it, it's, it's, it's a bad question, much like the grandfather paradox, but you know, it's, a, you know it's, it's, it's there. Instead, instead, we should ask, and we should continue to always ask, why is the meaning of life? Why is it? Why is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of it, perhaps? And again, this is, of course, just one shallow interpretation of the answer, but nonetheless, it's an answer I felt very comfortable sharing with you as the Karis Euphenor answer. Not, not, not the answer, but the one from Karis Euphenor. It's that, why is the meaning of life? It's to ask yourself what your purpose is all the time. It's not a pro- it's not a one simple life-changing moment. It is a series of life-changing or rather life determining moment after life determining moment every day in your life you must choose to live it and to do it and to do the things you do and only you can know why you do it only you can know but again to ask what is meaning of life or like what is it this is it that what is it expecting an answer is not good again an answer that someone else gives that's not good what you should do is ask yourself, again, this is the Karis for no answer. What you should do is ask yourself what, what it is, why, why it is. Why is, why am I doing all this? What's happening? And why, what am I doing to achieve whatever I want? Or, or why do I want to achieve those things in the first place? <clears throat> what makes me tick? What makes me get up in the morning? These are the questions that you will never escape, you will never escape from. And they are anxiety inducing questions. They are. But they would do worse for you if you just ignored them. You just put them away and cast them aside and said, No, I just, I'll just do what it is that I do. That's no good. This is as Karis Euphrenor presents the meaning of life. Thank you.